Congratulations. It's been a, a good month for you. Yeah, thanks, man. No, it's been a great month. Yeah, what's what's the feel? I mean, you know, packing, picking up two wins in relatively quick order, man. I think it uh, feels good for you. Of course, it feels great. Two, uh, two wins and two finishes, and I didn't even have time to put myself through an awful training camp for this one because it was so short notice. All I had to do was get on a plane, <laughs> come down and try my luck. So, yeah, it turned out perfectly, man. How challenging was that? I mean, did you look at it as kind of like a no-lose situation, like uh, whatever happens, happens? It's never a no-lose situation because you can lose. So, uh, no, it was an opportunity for me to get another payday in close proximity to my last payday. So that's uh, one of the main reasons why I did it, and it paid off in dividends. I know last time you kind of laughed about, like, why does everybody think I could go to light heavyweight? But then even you said today, like, this guy was huge. So... Does the size of those big guys, is it, is it difficult for you or is it like almost an advantage for you? Did I lose that fight or did I look like I was in rough shape at all? Not at all. That was amazing, by the way. That was a nice little trick. I just... Yeah, yeah, neat. Hey, you got to try that. Knock one of them chicklets out. <laughs> no, so, I mean, do you feel comfortable in there with the bigger guy? It just, it, it, was, it struck me as funny that you even mentioned, you know, in your interview, like, man, did you see the size of that guy? He was huge. I think he cut weight. I think he was 275. He's big even for a heavyweight. So, yeah, but my plan worked well. Pick at him, slow him down, and then land the big shots later in the fight. And it, it's working. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, and it's funny. I feel like there's a lot of kind of attention around you. I think part of it's your personality, part of it's your fighting style. People are paying attention. Are you, are you feeling that at all? Like, just this added eyeballs on you? There definitely are. Just I can tell because there's a lot more people reaching out for interviews. My social media followers went up, like, uh, like three times as much as I had already after my last fight, you know? So, um, yeah, I, I know that, but at the same time, you have to take everything with a grain of salt because while people are uh, high on you right now, the next time you don't have a good performance, everybody is going to just uh, rag on you as best they can. So, although, of course, I notice it, like I'm not that dumb, but I, uh, I try not to care. Last thing for me, uh, Maurice, I, is this thing personal for you? I mean, you, you mentioned him again. Is it, is it personal? Is it, does it have to happen? Nah, man, it doesn't have to happen. I can get back to the gym, start training a bit, and then they'll call me and say they need me in three weeks, and I'm willing to bet my dumb ass will be right back on an airplane. But if Maurice wants to do this, like I said, he cost me a payday last August. I, I, uh, I owe him a couple punches for it, that's for sure. Hey, man. I'm just curious, because you fought so quickly with the two, what's the difference between fighting in the 25-foot cage and the 30-foot cage? Uh, well, the 30-foot cage is definitely advantageous to a movement-based fighter like me, probably. But I, uh, although I could like tell the difference being in there, I don't think it affects me either way. I train in a 25-foot cage, so I, I can easily adapt and, and work well in the big one. But if it's a 25-foot cage, it's what I'm used to anyway, so I don't think it really matters. Do you have a preference at all? I don't know. Good performance. Thank you. You fought all over the, the place uh, throughout your, your career, from the US, Canada, Russia, uh, Australia, and even Dubai here. Is there anything different uh, from the weather or, or stuff like that, fighting here in, in Abu Dhabi? Yeah, um, so the outside, yes, the outside is way different than, especially in Canada, even when it's, well, when it's warm there, it's colder than it ever gets here, but the air is drier, so it would be definitely interesting if the fight was outside, I don't know how the extremely high humidity would um, agree with me, but since we're inside in a nice air-conditioned building and the air is like normal, I don't think that the um, climate here had any effect on my performance or um, it has anywhere else in the world either, I don't think, no. Just last one for me. Did you find your shorts? <laughs> no, I didn't find my shorts. The, the hotel staff apologized for losing them. They think they put them in the wrong room and they couldn't find them. Um, but then they brought me yesterday. They uh, Actually, they, they phoned my room. I woke up in a panic and I got the phone. I'm like, oh, man, am I missing weigh-ins? What's going on? And I, I, hello, hello, sir, can you turn off the do not disturb sign? We're out in the hallway. <laughs> so I turn off the do not disturb sign and they ring my doorbell. Uh, the hotel rooms have this doorbell that at the start I really liked the sound of because it meant my meals were getting delivered. But at the end, I just hated it because it rang so much every single day. So I open the door and they uh, give me this big this uh, thing with four four beers in it and they sorry for we lose your short sir we brought you a gift so hey uh thank you to the hotel staff because i can't wait to get into those beers as soon as we get back to the hotel i trade those shorts for a beer every single time